welcome. And uh, here, I'm going to put a poll up and ask a question. Is my bow crooked when I play? The truth is going to hurt, but I'm going to ask it anyway. So I, I won't expect an answer because I never get any, but that's fine. Uh, right. So, okay. I'm going to do a live stream that is mainly mainly going to be talking about um, – That's so. I'm going to do my live stream today to announce that I have finished my PDF file of the clean copy from of Broderip and Wilkinson's Complete Treaties for the Violin Cello. I spent many, many months doing this. I started it in October when I needed some, some uh, significant maintenance on my cello. Uh, unfortunately, I had to get a new tailpiece. The other one broke as I was getting it refitted. Uh, carved a new bridge, carved a new sound post, and I had a bow rehair. Unfortunately, the bow that got rehaired, the brass eyelet broke just yesterday as I was tightening the bow, as it happens in very, very humid environments such as I live in. And, uh, trying to keep it the humidity down far enough to be healthy for the instrument is next to impossible in the barn. I live in a freaking barn. It's just a just a horrible place to live, but I'm not a millionaire. So uh, now the point is that I have finished the PDF and be looking for that announcement for to put it up for sale. Uh, I already have one interested viewer that uh, would like to purchase it. And uh, I'm happy to say that it will be up for sale very soon. I've put the poll, all 47 pages of the PDF together and uh, reviewed it. It looks pretty good. There are some things, some minor and some not so minor, but not major, that I would change. But everything takes so much time when you just alter one little bit, especially when it comes to the musical examples. So I'm just going to leave it for now. But it is, it's looking good. It's very easy to read. Uh, you know, when you're working so, so closely and carefully with something for so many months, I mean, hundreds of hours, that's what I've put into this project, that you you just feel like wow you can do better uh and it's just me i'm the only one i'm not a publishing house by any means there's no team it's just one one person aaron uh but it's it's a great looking uh file i have all the written section the instructive section uh including the title page and I reproduce that as closely to the original as possible. And I think it looks pretty nice. Um, there are some things that are just not possible with the equipment that I have. Um, the musical examples are all inserted into the instructive section. The, the scales, arpeggios, the 10 easy lessons are all there. All the musical examples are there. And I've written just a, a tiny preface to just to say uh, what was in my plans, why I did some things. Uh, it's not comprehensive by any means, but I hope you look forward to it. And uh, to the buyer, if you're listening, thank you uh, for expressing interest because of you, I finished it. I didn't hurry up and finish it, but I finished it. <laughs> uh, now onto something different. I've been uploading videos of Johann Schettke's duettos. 
I've uploaded his first duet, the slow and fast movements, and I've uploaded the slow movement to the second duet. And either tomorrow morning or the next, I'll be uploading the fast movement from the second. And uh, uh, I don't know that I'll be getting any more recording in. Uh, my cello doesn't sound good as it stands, and now it sounds even worse because I've got a worse bow. <laughs> this thing makes my cello sound like I'm playing on string that you would tie up your a package with or something like that. Uh, just a lot of, a lot of thin, a lot of thin sounds. So things have not been going my way. <laughs> it's just not going good. Uh, I was hoping for a much improved status on my cello with all the maintenance, but it just turned out, uh, it's not adjusted. I'm not saying that it's it's the new stuff that's on here could be, but I'm not saying that because I don't know that it's true. It could just be an adjustment issue. Uh, I will, however, say that this is a very fat bridge and I, it seems to me that it does not help the situation if you compare it to my old bridge. And this bridge is the standard for which all preceding, I don't know, maybe 10 bridges or so I've had on the instrument. So this thing is the standard, and for some reason, he felt uncomfortable carving it thinner and making the feet thinner, and I, I, don't, I really don't understand why. It doesn't make sense. Uh, there you have it. Um, going to have to get it, going to have to get it looked at, and I'm going to have to do something about my bow. The brass eyelet is shot. It just snapped was tightening the bow and gone. So we're on to Shetki. I want to take a closer look at these because they're very interesting and they provide some insights, broad insights, I think, and a few details as far as position playing and possibly bowing too choice of Boeing. But what got me started is his preface to the 12 duets. I plan on reading that preface a hundred percent through and then commenting on it in my next episode, the podcast episode 38 and forgotten cello music. Uh, so look forward to that. That should be well, with any luck, it should be in the next couple of weeks. I, I really don't know. And then finally, thank you to my supporters. I really appreciate it. You have really made my uh, first month of the year. It's been really nice to see that. And specifically to one supporter, you know who you are. I will be finishing the string quartet arrangement of... Carol of the Bells, uh, sometime this week or next week, I hope. It's a uh, lot going on where I live. Uh, school is out, so um, family, kids are home, and uh, just not quite as much time. And uh, work is really thin lately, so I've been struggling to figure out how I can earn a little bit more money so I can uh, feed myself. <laughs> that would be nice. I mean, I haven't gone hungry, but sometimes it feels like the money won't be enough. So I have been bashing my brain. Um, does that help? Maybe. I. It doesn't feel like it's going to hurt any because I've been very, I'm not an entrepreneur. I'm definitely not a business person. Uh, anyway, I need, need, need to figure out how to get my income back up because it is not looking good right now. Uh, so I do these, 
I do these things and I advertise my cello lessons and I advertise my PDFs because I I'm looking for ways to increase my income. Um, so Chet Keys duets. I like these duets. I think there's a lot of uh, nice material in here. Uh, he's got a lot of good ideas. Um, it's late Baroque music. I think it's a, also a good introduction. You know, if students need short movements to practice rather than some lengthy work that feels overwhelming, things like this are really good to introduce the students into, let's say, the Bach Gamba sonatas, for example. I mean, even for more advanced students, of course, those are the ones who are going to play the Gamba sonatas. But even Suzuki, what is that book? I don't remember right now. Four? Five? There is a, a cut version from the Gamba sonata. I think it's the Allegro Moderato movement from his G major sonata for Viola da Gamba. And... Uh, even that one, with your not, let me put it this way, I think. If you are not introduced to that kind of music properly, it can be overwhelming, even, even with the very complex part that has been cut from the Suzuki version. And music like this, introduces those concepts you know you've got short a b structure movements and you don't have to think about lots of complexities and and uh stamina endurance to get through a large scale movement so even for advanced students i think this could be uh good introductory material Okay, now, you know, I'm trying, I'm also trying new things, like I'm trying to be more talkative, I'm trying to be more engaging, but that, that doesn't work either. Uh, I see people clicking on for like one second or five seconds, or if I'm lucky, 10 seconds, and then they poof, gone. <laughs> so I, I don't know what I'm doing wrong, but nobody wants to watch my videos. <laughs> so those of you who do watch a few seconds worth of my videos, thank you. I really appreciate it. Uh, I like to play. I mean, <laughs> I really do. Uh. <sighs>
uh, like I said, there are some things in here that really provide good material. I mean, there's sequence, uh, which is Baroque through and through. There is uh, awkward rhythm stuff. Um, arpeggios all over the place. Uh, you know, it's not it's not particularly singing cantabile melody, which Baroque is not particularly known for. So you get with instrumental playing, I think mostly you get these these uh, these melodies that are not particularly singable. Small snippets of it, maybe, you know, like partial phrases. The beginning. Bum ba dum bum body bum be da di da bum bum bum. You know, instead of the flourish with the written out ornament. You could have the melody just do that, for example, and then it would be more singable. But the point is that there's there's so many jumps in Baroque playing that you feel... Right here. Right there. This right here too is is quite baroquish, where you don't play the downbeat in uh, you know the second half of a period, or uh, maybe in a development hill, a development ish type of place. Uh, I know it's in A B form, so it's not exactly development, obviously, but you know A B can have developmental type characteristics. <laughs> Or variation, maybe that's a better way of saying it. Uh, been a long time since I read any material on structure, form, blah, blah, blah. But those aspects provide good learning ground for going on to, let's just say for the sake of argument, the Gamba Sonatas. I know that's not exactly what you would do first uh, in, in probably most cases. It'd be more like the Breval Sonata, uh, C major, for example, as student work, um, the Marcello E minor. I know I'm citing stuff that comes from Suzuki, but let's face it, a lot of students are doing Suzuki material, at least. Maybe not the course, but at least material. Um, but that doesn't make them bad. I I actually think they're really good pieces of music. Um, do you agree? I think there would be a lot of people that agree. Um, a lot of people certainly disagree with the choice of articulations and bowings <laughs> in the Suzuki methods. But the music itself is really good. You can go and print off that E minor Marcello sonata in fact you can print off all four movements not just the two movements that are presented in suzuki and uh you'll find things that the editor decided to put in that are not in the original and of course it's for the sake of learning for the sake of pedagogy students aren't going to think about all the bowing issues they're just going to plow through it however they can so now in the allegretto it's not a fast, fast movement. It's, it's allegretto. It's in two four, so it does feel quick. Lots of sixteenth notes. So you've uh, you've got that element of quickness and brisk, uh, brisk playing through, whooshing through, maybe hopping, jumping. But this is really nice. <laughs> Yeah. 
So, yeah, I mean, there's some interesting things there. Um, all the runs and, you know, of course, Vivaldi, every student cellist is going to play something by Vivaldi. Probably the E minor sonata would be my guess. Um, <laughs> course you've got those big jumps uh skips in it and this is nice because they they're not huge skips it prepares you for those those things uh duet number one is interesting mm, because it does have skips as well and they're very brief moments in skips He does have these these little figures that come across as rather uh, I what's the word um, I don't want to say difficult they're not difficult it's tricky uh, I don't really know which word I want to use I don't want to just default to say difficult because it's not not difficult if you you can utilize the bow efficiently and correctly <laughs> uh, those sort of things um, not not particularly uh natural it doesn't come naturally so it it stretches you. I mean, this is in the first duet in the in the fast movement. So certainly you've got to you've you've got to stretch yourself uh, to be able to play these little flourishes or little figures well. Um, but you you benefit so much by just taking little chunks like this, as I said earlier, that it, it just makes so much sense. And, you know, of course there's limited amount of time and students aren't going to take two lessons a week. Almost nobody does that. Unfortunately, um, just the privileged few are, with their teacher uh, several days a week getting guidance or maybe maybe coaching from various teachers. Um, so I understand that you don't have a lot of time and the vast majority of students are not practicing that much anyway, so you can barely get anything done in lesson because they're not <laughs> practicing. 
But I just feel after a year and a half of throwing myself at this project, I just feel like, man, there's, there's just too much good material left to the wayside that is that could be utilized for study. You know, I'm not saying that you you take all of it, but peruse peruse some of it and take out even excerpts, you know, use it as a study. Don't use it as a, a piece that you're going to learn in its entirety. Maybe take the the A section or just take the the B section or one period from one of the sections. So to what is it, the first eight measures for the half cadence and the second eight measures for the authentic cadence, whether it be perfect or not. That is my point. And then you may just discover that it's worth learning the whole thing because it will make the great music a little bit easier. Uh, students will be able to grasp the concepts a little bit better because they've been introduced to them. Uh, if you just throw a piece of music at them and you don't, then they don't know what, how to conceptualize or, or what, what they're looking at, especially with great music, because although it's beautiful and phrasing may or may come more naturally, uh, making it sound, uh, helping the students to go deeper into it is not that easy because they don't know how to think about it and here you can just you could give them a uh, an excerpt let's say they're working on a string crossing you could just say let's do these eight measures <laughs> Plenty of etudes out there that do this stuff. I recognize that, and I did them myself. But they're not always that musically oriented. They're kind of dry in many cases, most cases. Whereas this is musically oriented. There's a there's an obvious phrase that you can follow, even though it's slightly less melodic. Okay. Now for the melodic part, what about they need to work on something a little bit more syncopated or rhythmically challenging. Let's go to the B section. One, two, three. Four. One, two, three. Maybe just that. Or even. practiced well would go a long ways <clears throat> to helping with bow stuff, you know, because you have to be uh, flexible, you have to be counting correctly and counting constantly and all those things. And this is something that I still struggle with today. And if I go back and listen to the video, I'm probably going to find something wrong with it. But uh, that's because I did not count religiously when I was learning the instrument. I just, for some reason, either wasn't taught it or couldn't or didn't or refused to, to count or whatever. And it, it's, a, it's a deep, deep rooted habit. So if you one E and the two, or one, two, three, four, 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 one, you know, if you take it as a separate bow exercise, now with the slurs, one, two, three, four, 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 for example. And I, I, uh, I do advocate that kind of practice with my own students and they don't seem to mind it because uh, oftentimes I will not 
drag out the exercise. I will introduce it to them, let them work it out. Uh, if they seem to be having great difficulty, then I'll I'll spend a little more time on it. But oftentimes I don't want to drag these mm, dry pedagogical or technical points out. Yeah, something like that. Anyway, thank you very much for listening. I have gone 30 minutes and I think that's probably enough. Thank you for anybody or to anybody that's listening. And please do press like. I would really appreciate it. You know, the, the I don't even know what to say. <laughs> press like. <laughs> Be looking for the PDF. And if you need a cello teacher, you're looking for a cello teacher, I have uh, I have open spots. You can ask me about it, and I'd be happy to try and work something out with you.